What about the inside of the church? Is there what's it's, memorable about the inside of the church? Uh, well, we had a minister in uh, along about the forties. Uh, oh, it, he must have come in the late thirties because uh, the Reverend Ralph Albright uh, was a, a skilled carpenter, and he did a lot of uh, work on the uh, uh, the front of the church. We don't have a uh, we have a center altar at the, at the back back of the church. Or, way up in front, but we have two two side altars, and I think he did all that construction. The, uh, the, the, uh, we, have, we have some stained glass windows, but they're, uh, they're only geometric designs. They aren't, uh, they're, there are no pictures in them. Mm -hmm. um, and the woodwork is white. And uh, we've managed to carpet the the uh, the church. The first carpet, I th real carpet, it must have been installed in the fifties when I remember working on that project and mm -hmm. saving, getting the money together for that. It's always a big deal when you have to. Well, when I came, we didn't even have. You know, we just had that wood furnace. We didn't have a kitchen. Uh, and it, so there was a lot of construction went on in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And then uh, an addition was made um, after the Reverend Such came, uh, which just shows what you can do if you get a woman. <laughs> and we had a, a, a major... Uh, Put on a fireside room with a very lovely fireplace and uh, a nice lounge. And a pastor finally got a study, for heaven's sakes. The, the pastors have always had to conduct all their business over at the parsonage, and that was not convenient, especially for the families of the pastors. Um, I'm trying to think of the... Where are the uh, Sunday schools classes held? Well, our, our Sunday school classes never quite happened. We we have a big uh, downstairs uh, meeting room, a large, large dining room, and we always manage to uh, partition it a, to a degree. And we still uh, we still do that, but uh, we had a, a nursery for a long time, and uh, that was eventually we had fewer and fewer nursery student kids, so the pastor study finally became or the nursery finally became a really full blown pastor study, and this. Uh, the, the, the pastor study was no longer the size of a broom closet, you know. So uh, we made some progress there. But uh, we're not renowned for having a big Sunday school. So uh, things have fallen on hard times that way, but we managed to maintain our uh, the size of our congregation. It doesn't vary much from year to year. Could you have an estimate about how many uh, congregants are there on a Sunday? As an average? Oh, about 65 maybe, 70, mm -hmm. yeah, on a good, uh, more on a good, on an Easter or, mm -hmm. or a Christmas service, or something like that. We have always had a strong music program in the church, and we owe that pretty much to Oberlin College. We uh, have been successful in getting students from the conservatory to come out and serve our congregation. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, right now, we even now we have, uh, uh, well, sometimes we have as many as 10 in the choir and, uh, and almost as many men as women. So, uh, and, 
and, and those those young people are very skilled and they they bring a real what kind of capacity do the students provide musically? They, they come out, uh, well, we have had at times uh, an organist as well as a, as a uh, choir leader, mm -hmm. but usually it's just a choir director, and they come on Thursday night for, for practice and come back on Sunday. And uh, they often have to give up parts of their mm -hmm. vacations to be here for the Christmas or the Easter programs. Mm -hmm. But we've had really good relationships with those young people. And some mm -hmm. of them have gone on to do really good things. And one of them's a professor down at uh, Indiana University, which mm -hmm. has a fine musical mm -hmm. school. And uh, one of them was a conductor, of, became a conductor of the, uh, oh gosh, uh, the, uh, what, what is the maritime outfit of the service? Not, the Coast Guard or something mm -hmm. like that? He, is there a Coast Guard Academy? Maybe that's mm -hmm. where he went. He was served there. Um, but they they have done great things. They, they, Good successful lives, but they they've really enriched our church mm -hmm. through, through the years, and we've always managed to get that on the budget, you know, mm -hmm. to pay them to come, and uh, some of them have become very close friends mm -hmm. of, of people in the congregation. Um, does your church? Um support missionaries or what kinds of things outside of the community might they support? Uh, we we give a portion uh, about 10 percent of our uh, of our monies to missions to the missions of the United Church of Christ um, both the homeland mission and the uh, overseas missions, but we also uh, reserve the right for the congregation to pledge their money to local mission, to very local missions, that is within the county, mm -hmm. you know, and we support uh, a number of organizations. But we haven't, we haven't got into the mission trip kind of thing, mm -hmm. doing that sort of thing. I guess it's something we keep straining at, at hoping might happen someplace, mm -hmm. sometime. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've always mm -hmm. done what we we should do for uh, national support of missions. Mm -hmm. Is there something, what would you say the community at large would have to say about your church and your congregation? Well, uh, the the community at large might not even know <laughs> we're there. I keep running into people that don't uh, aren't sure. Uh, we have a young man who, uh, who who's who was whose family had broken up, and uh, he, he drove by our church every day on his way to work, and finally. Uh, he was curious enough that he decided one Sunday he'd just come in to see what was going on, and he's become a very fine mem uh, member of the church. Mm -hmm. But we're not uh, we're not great evangelists, I guess I must say. We don't uh, our outreach to the community isn't what it should be, uh, and it's. But it's a place that people come when they need a church, even if they haven't been there. And uh, we're, we're always open to welcome people. Uh, if they need a church, we'll serve them. Mm -hmm. Any huge event that's occurred, or large event that has occurred in your, in your church that uh, uh, prominent? Well, um, 
we're coming up on our 200th year here. Um, I can't remember. I figured I was going to be over 90 when it happened, and I'm only 84, so it must be coming up in another six or seven years. Uh, and the, the, they had, the 50th year uh, was marked by uh, James Fairchild, who was at the time president of Oberlin College, and he wrote uh, a very uh, a very lovely story about his life in the church, at, in the wilderness church, you know, coming here. He must have been born in probably in Massachusetts, but it, but he came with his parents, and, and he wrote about those first wild times, how uh, you could hear the wolves in the night, and uh, the the denseness of the forest sort of c closing in on people. Uh, and uh, the, 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 how few things they had, that everything, if, some, if your clothing wore out, you had to wait for it to be shipped out from, from the east, things like that, and how uh, shoes were so precious. Mm -hmm. And there was, and he wrote about the first school, schoolhouse, mm -hmm. uh, the, which I think uh, maybe his father taught in that first mm -hmm. school, uh, and uh, and that was at the fiftieth when the church was fifty years mm -hmm. old. He wrote that, and it is documented and has been reprinted that that little history. Mm -hmm. uh, locally mm -hmm. and, and nationally. Uh, it was a part of uh, a book that uh, his, of his biography that was written. I guess he wrote it himself, his autobiography. And I have a copy of that and I go back to it often just mm -hmm. to, uh, it's an interesting history of the founding of the, of Oberlin College as well as of the the section that dealt with the church. It also sounds like the, your church itself, yourself, itself has quite an extensive archives of its history from what you've said. Well, th that, that uh, we did manage to get that, mm -hmm. uh, what do you say, uh, all written, all typed right. down. The re reading it, when I wrote it, when I read it to, uh, I, I think for our 125th year, was that, was that what it would have been? I wrote this play uh, based a little bit on uh, uh, the play Our Town, you know, mm -hmm. that, that scene in the churchyard where all the people are sitting on chairs as though they were the, uh, and I called it the play uh, Voices from the Cemetery or something, something like that. Mm -hmm. And and and, and uh, like like all churches, I suppose of, of our age, uh, there are some families who who have sustained it because they've been big families mm -hmm. and they have stayed locally enough that uh, that they form a, a very important part of the tradition. Mm -hmm. The uh, the Knizel family, the Walker family, uh, and the Leinbach family uh, have been in it for decades and decades. And the North Times, uh, mostly those are German names. <laughs> you see, the English names mm -hmm. have faded out. But uh, that's that's the richness of uh, of. That you, that you own when you stay in one place a long time mm -hmm. is the, uh, the communal uh, knowledge of all those people, those families. Any last thing that you would like to add to what you've talked about today? 
Oh dear, I know I'll think of 300 things that I should have brought up uh, and talked about. But, uh, like, like most uh, country churches, they, we know who the good cooks are, <laughs> and we ha we have a lot of uh, a lot of potlucks and uh, things of that nature, uh, and, and that are always well attended and uh, and draw people together. Uh, we haven't produced too many ministers in our day uh, from the from our own church uh, a couple we had a uh, a missionary to South Africa uh, when I came here in 1950 he he and his wife were back they weren't actually from our church but uh, the church there was another church, we always called it the South Church, it was on the South Ridge. We're, we, our church is on North Ridge. The uh, South Ridge Church, I think it was the uh, Evangelical United Brethren Church. I think that the Reverend, his name anyway they he, he was a minister from that church but he came back to our church I think the church had faded away that he came from and uh, was a part of our church uh, but my my 84 year old mind can't think of his name right now <laughs> I apologize for that because they were a fine couple and uh, they inspired me at least to, to be more aware of South Africa. And uh, when the Reverend Nate as such had been to South Africa, that probably impressed me also about her. Mm -hmm. And I've, uh, I've always been interested in Bishop Tutu because of the connection to South Africa and that early minister that we had. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, he was a mem member of the congregation. He had been a minister. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to uh, thank you for uh, taking the time with me today and uh, the richness of um, your congregation and of your church and sharing that with me. And this is Becky Dugan, and this is October the 24th, 2011. <laughs>